top accolade global news updates. I am Zoe Bifa Jagrich. Chinese President Xi Jinping pledged to work with counterpart Vladimir Putin to rejuvenate their countries as the pair started a day of talks in Belgium, saying China would always be a good partner of Russia, according to Chinese state media. Putin arrived on Thursday for a two-day state visit that will conclude detailed talks on Ukraine, Asia, energy and trade with Xi, his most powerful political backer and fellow geopolitical rival of the United States. The China-Russia relationship relationship today is had end and the two sides need to cherish and nurture it, Z told Putin as they met in Belgium's Great Hall of the People. China is willing to jointly achieve the development and rejuvenation of our respective countries and work together to uphold fairness and justice in the world. China and Russia declared a no limits partnership in February 2022 when Putin visited Belgium just days before he sent tens of thousands of troops into Ukraine, triggering the deadliest land war in Europe since World War II by picking China for his first foreign trip since being sworn in this month. For a six-year term, that will keep him in power until at least 2030. Putin is sending a message to the world about his priorities and the strength of his personal ties with Xi. Putin told Xi their cooperation was a stabilizing factor, later describing the initial section as warm and comradely. Putin outlined sectors where the two are strengthening ties, from nuclear and energy cooperation to food supplies and Chinese car manufacturing in Russia. The leaders formally signed a statement deepening their strategic relationship, with Xi saying both sides agreed that a political settlement to the Ukraine crisis was the right decision. Putin said he was grateful to China for trying to solve the crisis, adding that he would brief Xi on the situation in Ukraine, where Russian forces are advancing on several fronts. Microsoft is asking some of its China-based employees to consider transferring outside the country. The company said on Thursday as relations between US and China grow increasingly strained over technologies like artificial intelligence and semiconductors. The Wall Street Journal, which first reported the news, said Microsoft is asking about 700 to 800 people who are involved in machine learning and other work related to cloud computing to consider relocating, providing internal opportunities opportunities is a regular part of managing our global business. As part of this process, we shared an optimal internal transfer opportunity with a subset of employees, a Microsoft spokesperson said in an emailed statement. Without specifying the number of employees it sent the request to, Microsoft remains committed to China and will continue to operate there and on the market. The spokesperson said the employees, mostly engineers of Chinese nationality, were earlier in the week offered an option to transfer to the US, Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand. The move comes and spiraling Sino US relations as President Joe Biden's administration hiked tariffs on various Chinese imports, including electric vehicles, EV batteries, computer ships, and medical products. Japan's Toshiba said on Thursday it will cut up to 4,000 jobs domestically as the industrial conglomerate accelerates restructuring on the new ownership. Toshiba delisted in December due to a $13 billion takeover by a consortium led by private equity firm Japan Industrial Partners JIP, capping a decade of scandals and upheaval. The consortium's efforts to engineer a turnaround at Toshiba are seen as a test for private equity in Japan, which used to be seen as Hig Taka or Vultures due to its rapturous reputation. Toshiba said it would relocate office functions from central Tokyo to Kawasaki, west of the capital, and target an operating profit margin of 10% in three years. In Japan, which is known for its conservative business culture, PE firms are increasingly seen as an option for companies disposing of non-car assets or lacking successions candidates. A wave of companies have announced job cuts in recent months, including for the copier maker Konica Minota, cosmetic from Chesidio, and electronic fan Oldenron.
The U.S. removed Cuba from a short list of countries the United States alleges are not cooperating fully in its fight against terrorism. A State Department official said the official cited the resumption of law enforcement cooperation between Cuba and the U.S. as one of the reasons why the previous designation was deemed no longer appropriate. The department determined that the circumstances for Cuba's certification as a not fully cooperating country have changed from 2022 to 2023, the official said the decision marks a tepid if symbolically important move on behalf of the biden administration which until now has largely maintained trump era restrictions on the communist run island the cooperation against terrorism list which the state department is required by law to provide the u.s congress is not the same as the state sponsored of terrorism list according to the department official former u.s president donald trump separately designated cuba a state sponsor of terrorism just prior to leaving office, a job that Cuba maintains has contributed to a severe economic crisis on the island and to shortages of food, fuel and medicine. Cuban Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez applauded the decision by the Biden administration but said it did not go far enough. The U.S. has just admitted what is known to everyone that Cuba collaborates fully with efforts against terrorism. Rodriguez posted on X, all political manipulation of the issue should cease and are arbitrary and unjust inclusion on the list of countries sponsoring terrorism should end added north korea iran syria and venezuela remained listed as not cooperating fully with u.s counter-terrorism efforts the official said Air travel demand from China is not back to pre-pandemic levels for Singapore Airlines. Citizens to the Asian hub has helped fill seats and the airline will add more China capacity this year, its CEO said. Global aviation capacity returned to pre-pandemic levels this year, but recovery has been slower in Asia's aviation industry due to still sluggish international demand in China. The world's second largest economy, he said, the visa-free scheme between China and Singapore, which began in February has provided some little load factors for Chinese flights. The airlines group was progressively restoring China capacity and would increase seats to Shanghai, Belgium and Guangzhou this year. Go added that the flag carrier suspended April flights to China's Shanghai and Zaiman, citing a lack of regulatory approvals. These are now in place and flights will operate until July when permissions must be resought, Go said. Singapore Airlines posted a record on annual profits for the second year in a row on Wednesday, raising its dividend. However, the carrier's net profits fell around 4.5% year-on-year for the March quarter, with profit growth sliding in the preceding two quarters. The company also expects passenger yields, a measure of average fare paid per mile per passenger, to continue to moderate as airlines expand capacity and flag the geopolitical woes and supply chain pressure. That is the size of Top Accolade Global News Updates. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen. Happy Thursday!